camera that steady, I was pretty impressed with myself because even you guys on your interviews, you were all the bugs going up your nose and in your mouth, and we actually did pretty good on that episode, I think. Holy cow. And we yeah. finally got to see your, your duffel bag. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was just one of them. <laughs> yeah. Yep. You know, I, I keep trying to think of how to get Chooch. Chooch fits with this team very well, and he loves doing this stuff, too. And I'm constantly looking at new ways to do it. I, I, it's almost at the point, do you need a cameraman for the cameraman? You know what I mean? <laughs> right. That's what I was saying. If there was a way that y'all could get another camera that can record him as well, and then, yeah, maybe switch out. I know it's almost impossible, but unless you have an actual cam- camera team that you can hire to do the, all that, but I can only imagine from his perspective. Tell us, Cheech, uh, what is it like um, kind of seeing some of this stuff uh, from your point of view, from the camera lens? Um, what do you think of, just tell us a little bit more about that and your experience. It's, it's been quite educational for me. I mean, I've, I've been around it most of my life, but the, the fact that you're out and uh, trying to keep these guys in line where you can actually get them on the camera, they, cause everybody kind of wants to run off and do their own thing. And it's just like, yeah, that don't work for the camera guy. You gotta, you gotta just stick around and, and then, you know, if, we, if you do get a hit with your metal detector, then if I'm not there, holler, and I'll come a running over because, you know, not not as entertaining if you try to dig it up twice. <laughs> right, totally. Totally true. So, yeah, I can't um, wait to go back in Florida with Mark and a few of them and do some of that. That's definitely on my bucket list of things to do. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, you're going to have to definitely go on more adventures as a treasure hunter now uh, than a camera guy, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure I'll always have a camera on me, though. That's kind of what, <laughs> kind of what my specialty is, so that's, that's what I'm doing. You know, and I was thinking, Chooch, maybe uh, we need to do more GoPro, like chest harness type GoPro, like Instead of, like, you have a roll, and we do have the GoPros in other hands and stuff like that. But like what you said, this is all realistic, so it's hard to always pre-plan. So maybe what we're learning from season one is we don't want to, like, stop and set up cameras everywhere. Because then it's not real because, you know, we're just doing it organically. But maybe if we have something on us where those cameras are rolling. Now that's really tough with editing. If you can just imagine cameras are rolling for 10, 12 hours a day, and then we got to go through 10 or 12 hours a day of footage. But somehow I'm trying to figure out how to get Chooch more involved instead of just popping up once in a while. We'll have to figure that one out. Hmm. They do have two. They do make the uh, like the GoPro harnesses. They make the same harness for um, any size cell phone as well. So you could always, you know, um, I know a lot of people like have older cell phones that they don't like that still have good video um, capabilities. Maybe it's just you upgraded. And if you still have that phone, it makes, you know, you clear everything from it and you could just stick it in the harness and and have your own phone still in your pocket or whatever and go go from there yeah that's a good one they also make the the 360 cameras are becoming quite advanced now these days and uh the 360 camera i'm trying to find one it used to be where you have to set it up in the tripod it took a little bit to set it up and get it right there's a new gopro i think it's a gopro max is what they call it, where it films on both sides. It, there's other cameras that can do a 360, and it has a gimbal that follows uh, anything that's moving. So there might be some things in the future that we try in uh, season two to where um, something that doesn't need to be set up, it doesn't take too long to set up, we can 
be free to go out and explore and discover. And something is kind of keeping track of us. Um, and Chooch, we did have a question in chat. Phil would like to know what kind of camera equipment you, you currently are using? I have a Panasonic right now, but we're planning to upgrade on season two. This was just kind of a kind of a cheaper one, but we're just just getting into it. But yeah, we're definitely going to upgrade for season two. But then we do a lot of GoPro, like any almost all of the shots that are in the in the buggies and all that are pretty much GoPro shots. Fantastic. Well, I do know that um, all the shows that I've been on, like Beyond O'Garland and also with the Discovery as well, um, they all use the GoPro. So um, I think it looks great, the action photos and stuff. Um, yeah, those GoPros are... We have uh, mods on those GoPros, don't we, Chooch? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. Microphone yeah. and even camera lenses, and these are. Uh, I think we're using the GoPro tens for most yeah, of them, have... and a lot of them. Yeah, they're pretty advanced. Okay. They're they're good cameras. Yeah, they got lights on them and mic and microphones and all that. So yeah. Awesome. Um, but what about the big the camera does the better job. Yeah, it definitely does. Um, what about the drone? Do you t um, which drone, I can't remember, are y'all using? Right now, that, that's something that we're always looking at. You're, that's one thing that I tell everybody in my blogs, whatever I write. You know, I'm always telling everybody, as you become more advanced, be prepared to make your pockets deeper, however you have to do that. Because right now, we're running the DJI uh, Mavic. Pro is what it's called. Um, it's already, we got about three grand into that drone between the tablet and the controller and everything. Um, but I was just looking at some of the more bigger drones that can fly faster, higher. Yeah, they can actually carry a bigger camera on it with bigger lenses to get even a better 4K shot. Um, some of those drones that I'm looking at right now, they're about seven grand. So that's one thing, doing this kind of stuff, it's not cheap. I think Chooch is con consistently carrying around uh, around seven grand of cameras and accessories in his bags. And those go into ATVs, they get bounced around, they get dirty. You know, it, it's, it's not the cheapest thing, but it is definitely paying off in the way of good footage. That's for sure. Awesome. Well, it's good to know. I was I couldn't remember what drone. I really enjoy the drone um, shot because it gives everyone a different perspective, you know, and especially, you know, with following the ATVs and up on those mountains and cliffs because unless you're there, you really don't get that full feel. And I think that those shots are very, very important uh, to help people kind of get a feel for the area you're in, what kind of terrain you're on, et cetera, et cetera. So. Oh, and, and for the, the treasure hunting part of it, uh, the, the drones have been great being able to get quickly to some place that, you know, may take you several hours to walk through, uh, you know, getting a different perspective on things the the filming part is good, but but as far as the treasure hunting, uh, those drones have really been a great tool. Yeah, we so use. Oh, sorry, okay. Gypsy, go ahead. No, I was just going to say that a lot of a lot of metal detectors that I know that have a large large properties that uh, they are going metal detecting on will use drones as that kind of tool, not just uh, a lot of people don't use them like the way you're using them, of course, to get this footage for the episode, but they use them as a tool to help them um, see the lay of the land, see what kind of terrain they're, you know, and especially to find maybe 
where old outlines of old properties were, caves, et cetera, to, you know, to keep them from, you know, going up in some places when you're exploring. And uh, I think they're a fabulous tool for for treasure hunting. Maybe y'all can yeah. expand on, upon that. That's exactly right. Even in that episode, we were all, that terrain was rough. Uh, like what you said, it's it's kind of hard. Even with the drone, it's a little bit deceiving how hard that terrain was. And after uh, we were out for the day, I remember a couple times Todd's pointing to Cliff, Gypsy. You would do, you know, we were all looking at the terrain, going, "Hey, you know, man, if only we can see on top of that ridge on that hill over there." And that would have took one of us, who knows how long, to climb down one cliff go across the valley, go to the other cliff. And here we were using the drone, not only for filming purposes, but we were using the drone to look for cave openings and all kinds of things. So very useful tools. They really are. Um, I absolutely love them. And uh, for, especially for those type of things, and especially like, where, like what you said, um, I mean, we were all, a lot of people don't understand that terrain, is, some of the areas we had to just hike to get up to those areas. I mean, we make it look easy, but, you know, that's quite the truck. And uh, Not all of us make it look easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mark, we all take our turns with that one. Trust me, I I had a hard time from that episode, and I know you've had a hard time. Todd had a hard time previous. Uh, that just kind of comes along with the reality part of it, and that's one thing that we like to promote. Um, we, Me and Gypsy, Todd, a lot of us have had some experience with working with, you know, big time, uh, 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 what am I trying to say, producers and stuff, and we know the difference between, well, they just didn't, re- they tried to show the background. They didn't want to capture that we weren't quite as deep in the woods as what they're trying to show. But with Uncharted Expedition, if you see us walking, I guarantee you, you can stop and pause our frames and you'll see sweat coming down our backs. And it's real. It's, I mean, we really are out there looking for these things out in the middle of nowhere for every episode. That's so yeah. true. Well, um, I think that's a good so, that's a good point. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, you go ahead, Mark. Well, I was just going to say a lot of people don't realize, you know, each of these areas that we all go to. You have the east and you know the the uh, southeast, and then you have uh, up in the northeast where Amanda is, but. You know, being out west and especially out there close to the desert, it's an expansive area. And we drive for miles in those ATVs first. And then we get to a place where you can't drive anymore. And then you start walking. So we're out, of, when we say we're out in the middle of nowhere, we're literally out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> It's always fun going in the middle of nowhere, though. You just never know what you're going to find. Well, that's one of my biggest, yeah, and that's one of my biggest sayings. You want to find something that's lost? Do not waste your time. Trust me on this one. I did it. Don't waste your time going to the, now, okay, some things are a little bit different, but I promise you, if you're not finding yourself lost yourself, how are you supposed to find something that's been lost for anywhere from a couple hundred years to thousands of years old. And that's one thing that I think Treasures of America is starting to show that we're not, you know, there's a reason. Let me give you an example. Superstition Mountains in Arizona, the Lost Dutchman Mine. That was my hometown. I was born and raised in Mesa, right on the Mesa and Tempe area. That is one of still today, after all this time, and I remember my dad talking about that story and his dad talking about that story for several generations. That's been one of the most talked about treasure stories in the United States. And here we are claiming that we're professional treasure hunters. We have all this equipment and we're going for these treasures. And we're, we are showing treasures that a lot of people haven't even heard about. 
And there's a reason for that. Uh, you know, Superstition Mountains is a great